Alrighty, I'm going to just plug this in and we'll get started. There we go. Hello everyone. Good evening to all of you, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon and good morning. My name is Winnie Gets Bread, and today is the start of Astral Radiance Week. So on Friday, May 27th, is the release date of the Astral Radiance Pokemon card set, but they've been appearing early at certain stores, such as my local card store, Poke Nerds. Please go and check them out if you're in the area. And they have some of their product already of Astral Radiance. They had the Darkrai Pokemon Center ETB up at their store. They also had the Build and Battle decks, as well as just the booster packs. So I went there today and we pulled some of the booster packs. And we bought them for, they actually had a pretty good deal. It's three booster packs for $10. And it's a very nice deal that they have right now. Please be sure to check them out. And also they have a thing there where you could support the Ukrainian effort. So if you'd like to donate to Ukraine, you could also donate through there. If you go and visit in the store, they have a nice little donation box there just for the um, the support of Ukraine. So please be sure to check them out and add in there, pop in the store and get yourself some packs as well as donate to Ukraine to help the, the people over there. All right, before we get started, I would like to say again, this is a set from um, an early set we've been trying to find at stores and stuff, but luckily um, some of the local card stores did have it open, and um, you could get them at, again, Poke Nerds. They have a, a sale right now of the Astral Radiance packs, as well as Brilliant Stars. If you're still hunting for a Charizard V-Star, the Arceus V-Star, you can um, go there. And they have, again, the deal on the booster packs, which is a very nice buy. All right, once again, the Astral Radiance set is officially releasing this Friday. So it's about four days, five-ish days away. So not a very long wait time, but it's coming up. All right, so first, this is the pile of the cards that are new. So those are the ones I've pulled today. I bought six packs of it for $20. And... Everything in here, I think I've already shown it on stream, but I think I'm going to sort through it. And again, these are the pulls from a few packs from the pre-release. I know some people already went to the pre-release last week like I did. And some areas today was the pre-release. So um, I've been popping around social media. There's been some nice pulls by X Samantha, Samantha Chalk X on Instagram. She got some nice pulls. Um, there's other people also on Twitter. They've got some pretty nice pulls. I've been seeing a lot of people, um, getting the Radiant Pokemon in this set. So they have this new design for the Shinies, the Chase Card Shinies. Um, this one's the Radiant Heatran, but people have been posting, they've been pulling the Radiant Greninja or the Radiant Alucha, which are very, very nice Chase Cards. I'm planning to get a Radiant Greninja myself. And yeah, there's been pretty good pulls all around. I suggest getting the build and battle decks because usually those pre-release kits have good pulls in them. Um, you know, to make people excited for the set. They probably like, put packs in there with some good stuff. And of course, they have the Hisuian region with all the Hisuian Pokemon. We actually got some new ones in this um, pile here, which I'll go through in a little bit. But then you have the starters from Pokemon Legends Arceus. Of course, there's V-Stars of them as well. These were from last time, if you remember. And yeah, going off from there, let's get started with the actual new cards that we've got. Let me just move things around a bit. Just move everything to the side first. And I think I'll just leave those there. Alrighty. So first off, what we have here is... A Galarian Zapdos V, and this is a Trainer Gallery, and it looks like we have, that's the assistant of the professor. I haven't played Sword and Shield, so I don't remember her name, but I think that's the assistant to the professor in Sword and Shield, and it looks like she's chasing the Roadrunner-like Zapdos all around the region, so it's very, an, a very interesting art. I checked this on um, TCG Player for the market values, and right now... You could get one for $23 on a pre-sale before the set comes. 
and I'm guessing that once it is officially released, they'll send you the card, but this one is going for a pre-sale right now, as all of the Astral Radiant cards are, and this one, I think, last time I checked, was like 20 ish dollars, so there we go, there's our Galarian Zapdos. I'm actually going to go and sleeve it and put it in the top loader. I always like to encourage my viewers and people in the Pokemon card community, as well as other collectibles and hobbies, um, please do take good care of your stuff, especially the trading cards and other hobbies that involve even more expensive collectibles, um, because you want to preserve those memories as long as you can, because each card to me, whether it's a 50 cent card, a $10 card, anything like that, whatever its value, it's a memory. That card is a memory and it's best to preserve your memories and look back on them and keep them in fine shape. So that's why I always encourage sleeving and protecting your cards and our other things that you collect. What I have here are penny sleeves. Again, these are just the basic protection you could use on your trading cards. Um, they're called penny sleeves because each of these actually costs a penny. They come in a pack of 100 for about a dollar. So again, penny sleeves. They're very nifty to keep away scratches and pieces of dust from your trading cards. And then the next step up, let me find an example. I don't have an example of them right here with me unless I crack open one of my binder, one of my binders, which I guess I might do. The next step up would be some of these deck protector sleeves that you usually you use in, you know, the decks when you're playing the game. But as you can see, let me flip one of them over just to show what I'm talking about. These come in different designs. I don't know. I need to maybe put it on this side. There we go. Let me just scoot around. These are the deck protectors. They're usually for decks in a game, but I sometimes put my cards in these sleeves as well. There's some Ultra Pro ones as well as the Pokemon design ones, which are from Elite Trainer Kits. And yeah, they're kind of a little bit more, they're a little bit more sturdier than the Penny Slaves, but we also have another layer of protection on them. There's people who use Penny Slaves and then they put them in deck protectors, which again, it's just another layer of protection, which is good for cards. But then there's also these hard cases here called Top Loaders. Now these are a little bit... These are a little bit pricey, but they're usually reserved for your more expensive or more valuable cards, whether it be a monetary value. And also, I like to put sentimentally valuable cards in the top loaders as well. So here's a top loader. It's a hard plastic case, very rigid. It's very sturdy and it just further protects your more valuable cards. And yeah, so again, I suggest penny sleeves if... I understand not everyone can afford some of the more expensive things. Like, there's even more expensive things in the top loaders, like the magnetic top loaders that seal, one-touch seal and stuff like that. I know those are very expensive. And if you can, you could just get some penny sleeves and you'll, you'll be good to go. So please protect your cards, everyone. And you'll be protecting memories and keeping your stuff more valuable and and much more organized, in my opinion. So... All right, so now I'm going to just sleeve this thing in the top loader and put it to the side. If I could find the opening, that is. There we go. There we are. There's our Galarian Zapdos, and just a little tap to move the card downwards so it's not poking out at the top. There we go. I'm going to put it right around here. There we are. All right, our next card is a Decidueye V. This is the Hisuian form of Decidueye. As you can see, it's a fighting type. And there's its attacks, and it has a nice sheen on it. And, um, yeah, let's put this in a penny sleeve as well. Once so again, the penny sleeves are going to protect from any scratches and dust, so it's important to put your cards in them. Just bring it to the bottom like that. Might be using this for a deck. I, I played with someone at the pre-release who used two Hisuian Decidueye as his own Pokemon. As his only Pokemon in the pre-release deck of 40 cards. So that was pretty interesting. And yeah. Let's 
get another top loader. I have some on my shelf ready for this. And then we're going to put it in there. When I played through Legends Arceus, I chose Hisuian Samurai, and that's the one I don't have a card of yet. That's a V. I have a regular Hisuian Samurai. It's somewhere in there, but I still don't have the V version of it. So we're almost, we're two out of three on the starters for this set. There's that one. I'll put it like that. All right. So next is a Reverse Rare Magnezone. Very nice. I really like the art on this one. It's very exaggerated, which I really have a, a liking to when they do it like a more exaggerated art form in these cards. You have your Magnemite. Here's a new one. This is a Suian Avalug. Avalug was one of the Pokemon that had a new form in the games. So this is Hisuian Avalug. Looks like there's a stadium in play. This does 120 more damage. That's very interesting. And massive ice as well. So 30 less damage from attacks. Very nifty card to have. I, I'd say if you learn how to use it in the deck. There's a Nickit. It looks like it's stealing a berry. There's a Togepi with some people in the background. There's a Togekiss in this set, but my friend Ben, who I met at the pre-release, he pulled the Togekiss, but he didn't have Togetic, so he couldn't use it in his deck, sadly. Here's a Chetot. I still haven't caught one in Legends Arceus. I still need to do that. That's one of the Pokemon I still haven't caught. There's Ursaring. There's also Ursa Luna, but I haven't pulled an Ursa Luna yet. Hopefully I'll find some in a little bit, but yeah, here's Ursaring, and again, Teddy Ursa evolves into Ursa Luna as well in the Pokemon Legends Arceus game, so one of these days we'll probably find a card of it from the set. Here's some Sweet Honey. There's a Routes, another fan favorite from Hoenn. Fighting Energy, that's just an energy. Drifblim, one of my favorite Pokemon. They're kind of annoying, though, in... Pokemon Legends Arceus, they attack you no matter what you do. You try to sneak up on them, they'll just disappear and teleport right behind you. And then they start using Shadow Ball and all these other crazy attacks on you. So, yeah, you need to be careful of Drifblim when you're in the in the game. It does 50 damage with its single energy attack, but if you have something that's times 2 to Psychic, let me find a card that is. I don't think I have any. There are times two to Psychic, yeah. If there was a card that was times two to Psychic, this actually would do 100 for just one damage. You also get some damage on the benched Pokemon as well, so two damage counters. Could do something with that, I'm guessing. There's Grass Energy. Oranguru V. So this one, um... In the opening videos, which I've posted on my YouTube, it's called One Who Gets Bread. That's the channel. If you guys like to check out the opening videos, they're shorts. They're less than one minute, and it has, like, the openings of all these cards from the packs. I ordered six again, and so it's a part, it's a six-part series of the Astral Radiance openings I have on there. And the pack that had this Oranguru V in it, I was doing, like, you know, the four to the front and you could see the shininess of the card behind the item cards and the trainer cards. I was like, oh, we might get something good. And we did. We got an Oranguru V. I wonder how I'd use it in a deck though, but I kind of like the art. The close up of the fan, the details on it. It's it's pretty wild looking, you know? I love the detail on the fan. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may search your deck for up to two Pokemon tool cards. Very cool. So that's an ability. So I'm guessing if you, it's a basic, so could you use this multiple times? As many as you like. It doesn't say you could only use one of these abilities. I wonder. Oh, wait, no. It has to be in the active spot. That's, that's the kicker. If it didn't say that, I wonder if this might be an OP card. Because if you had some on your bench and you could still search for up to two tools. But it says it has to be in the active spot. So there's the restriction on there. And then 50 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active. 
this could be cool as like an early game thing, I think, as like your first, in your first hand, one of the first basics you pull, I guess, because psychic, and then they add, well, you won't be attacking until, um, like turn three, unless you find a tool card that could give you energy, but I don't know, maybe you could do some stuff with this. I am, I think I'm out of penny slaves, so I'm just gonna have to really protect this thing, I don't know where I'm gonna put it. Maybe up on one of the other containers for now, but I need to put this in a penny sleeve. I just don't have any more right now with me currently. All right, let's move on to Bronzor. I use I tried to use Bronzor in the pre-release. Didn't work out that well, though. Here's a Scyther. I have so many of these Scyther. Here's a Heavy Ball. Look at your face-down prize cards. You may find a basic Pokemon and replace this Heavy Ball with that basic Pokemon. So let's say if you had some good, a good Radiant Pokemon, specifically the Radiant Greninja. I know I've seen some play of it in the pre-release tournament. If it's apparently one of your prize cards, you could just switch it out with this Hisuian Heavy Ball. And now I think you put it in your hand. Let me see. Yeah, you put it in your hand, so now you could play that basic Pokemon. It doesn't say it can't be a Pokemon V or anything like that. You could still play it. It just has to be a basic Pokemon that you switch this out with in your prize card. So it's a it's a pretty nifty tool if you if you're feeling it. You accidentally put one of those in there or something key to your deck that's a basic and you oh man, it must be in my prize cards. Well, now you know you could you could switch it out with this item. Pretty cool. Here's a Choi. Reverse Foil Choi. Here's a Hepowdon. I don't remember many people using Hepowdon. Dark Patch. Okay, so this is essential, especially to um, the set. The dark type Pokemon in the set. You'll see one of them later on. It's actually the card that kept beating me during the pre-release tournament. But Dark Patch, again, attach a basic energy card from your, dis your discard pile to one of your bench dark Pokemon. So again, it's just power like, powering up those. Mm -hmm. Just powering up those dark Pokemon in your bench, and then you could switch one in, and you could do some crazy stuff. You just keep the energy flowing. So this is going to be an essential to some decks. I'm going to try to make a dark deck. If I could find the card list for one of the pre-release 20 card packs... I'm going to try and build a deck based on those Pokemon because it was really good. Like three or four people during the pre-release of like, I would like to say 20 people or three, four, five of the 20 had the dark deck and they, I'm pretty sure they won all their matches. So yeah, it was a crazy deck that you're able to build with these new dark cards and this will help you with your deck. Alrighty. Hisuian Growlithe, one of the cutest Pokemon they've released in the cutest form, I think, arguably. And looks like it could prevent all damage to an attack, so this could have been useful, I guess. No energy and two energy, too, and then you could have evolved it. It's a pretty nifty card. Rufflet, I need some of these. I want to use the Hisuian Bravery because it has a free attack and it does... 30 times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active. I want to use that in a deck, and now I have another Rowlet for it. Alright, so we're getting closer to that point where I was talking about there's that one dark card. It's actually a Hisuian Overquill, but this is a Hisuian Quillfish. So we'll need this Quillfish in order to evolve and use it in the deck. Here's DNC. They released another DNC card. And... Um, this one's a Holofoil Rare, as you can see. As long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, whenever your opponent plays a supporter card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to the bench Pokemon, I think it says. I need to find a tissue. Sorry, it's a little bit cold. Alright, sorry about that. Card done to... Your benched basic Pokemon. So I guess if there is an ability or a, an attack that does damage to him, you could prevent it, I'm guessing. Oh, supporter card, not... Never mind. Supporter card, not an attacking Pokemon. Supporter card. So I guess if there's something like you need to switch your bench Pokemon or... Or switch one of your bench Pokemon out for your active, I guess this card prevents that, if that's the rule of the supporter. 
and then we're able to draw draw two cards very neat it's very useful drawing cards because i know i've had some bad hands and i just need to somehow get more cards but then there's also cards in this set that punish you if you draw too many cards and you have more cards than your opponent. And I know this because I had, at one point, like a 10-card hand. And the dude he played, I forgot which one, but it was one of the supporters. And it was like, draw as many cards in your hand. And then there was also another attack where it was like, if, you're, if your opponent has the same matching number of cards, it does plus blah 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 damage. And yeah... <laughs> This set looks like it involves a lot of these cards in your hand mechanics. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, me mechanics. Doing with all the attacks that involve drawing cards and then depending on how many cards you have and whatnot. It's very interesting. You could do some crazy strategies with that kind of stuff. All right, I'm going to put this to the side. All right, now dark energy. Choi again. I've got so many of these choice. Looks like we need to flip this. It's upside down. There we go. Yen Mega. We've seen this one before. Oh, yeah. This is the one. If you have fewer cards in your hand... If you have more cards... Sorry about that. If you have more cards in your hand than your opponent, this attack does 80 more damage. See? Stuff like this. This would have been good in the pre-release, but sadly it was never in my hand at all. I've been getting Yanmas, but just not its evolution. One of my favorite things, back to the Yen Mega and Yanma, one of my favorite things to do in the game is actually feed these guys, the Yanma and the Yen Mega. I love feeding them. They're very cute. There's, I really like the idea of how in real life there's at one point a giant dragonfly. I think that's like pretty cool to think that these, like a Yen, oh, an actual Yen Mega was alive at one point on Earth. And it's just Yanma is just adorable as well. So it's a very fun Pokemon. Great job, Bog. I think I've talked about this one in the previous Astral Radiance video stream I did. Psyduck. Togepi. I talked about it already. I talked about that one too. Yen Mega. Oh, here's a new one. Hisuian Sneasel. I think there's a Hisuian Sneasler V as well, but here's a Hisuian Sneasel. Here's the card. This is the card that's been beating so many people during the pre-release. It's because of this attack. Hisuian Overquill, at least this version of it, the uncommon version, has an attack called Tormenting Poison, and it's free, so you don't even need to attach any energy to it. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. During Pokemon checkup, put 5 damage counters on that Pokemon instead of 1. So instead of 10 damage per turn, you're taking 50 on whatever Pokemon in your active spot happens to be holding and then you can't retreat either so you can't switch out if this attack lands so they're stuck taking 50 damage per turn have fun <laughs> i can't wait to use this in a deck hopefully i'll be able to find more of the regular version to put them in, put them in a deck and then build it around the 20 card dark evolution pack from the pre-releases very crazy art as well. Look at all those spikes. This thing in the game, if you get an alpha overquill in the game, it is huge. It's like a blimp. And it has like these, I guess like 12 foot long spikes coming off of it. It's crazy. Or not 12 foot long, but you know, like 5 foot. It looks like it's 5 foot. It's as, it's as long as the trainer model in the game. So very crazy Pokemon, but an insane ability. I mean, not ability but an insane attack that has defeated many <laughs> during the pre-release tournament that i went to it absol and hisuian samurott specifically have been really tormenting i guess in a lack of better words there's one right there tormenting a lot of the other tournament goers and their decks because of the boost that the dark pokemon have been getting in this set all right fighting energy gold duck Ooh, discard each player's active Pokemon on all attached cards. Ooh, that's interesting. This this card is interesting. Super effective glasses. Okay, this thing is nuts. You attach this um to a Pokemon, and now it's times three. 
It's times three super effectiveness. This is crazy. It makes cards, again, from Pokemon TCG Radio's video on it. He said that this makes things that weren't viable before viable now. So this is a very valuable card if you want to surprise some people with some crazy and wacky deck ideas. Super effective glasses, everyone. Here's the Krikatoon. Combi. Ralts, Snicket. Yeah, we've seen these ones. Togepi, Chatot. Troy, reverse foil again. Reggie Drago. Okay, so Reggie Drago. And this one just has 160 for three energy. But you need a grass and a fire. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon's in the active spot, you may draw cards until I have four cards in your hand. So I guess this is like a card you would play when you're really down with cards in your hand. If you need some new ones, if you're like two cards in your hand. In that situation, you discarded a bunch of them. This could be a good card to go through play. But remember the slogan, everyone. Whenever you're in doubt, play Marnie. So, But I guess in certain situations, you'll be playing Reggie Drago as well, I guess. Alright, here's a Bergmite. This is the pre-evolution of Avalog, of course. Psychic Energy. Magneton. We've talked about in the last video because it was in the it was in the pre-release deck that I got. Grape Jaw. We've talked about that. Here's Togetic. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may heal 30 damage from your active Pokemon. Okay, so you keep it on your bench and then you could take some 30 HP back to your active Pokemon, I guess. And then you can set up a Togekiss as well if you find a Togekiss card. Rufflet, again, we'll need this for the deck. There we go. The camera didn't focus on it at first. Ponyta, Chatop, we've talked about those. Bronzong, Weirdeer. This is a reverse rare. Sadly, I didn't get to play Weirdeer because I couldn't figure out what to do with it. This is the other attack that I tried to use. Extra Sensory. It's the same kind of thing. If you have the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent, it does 80 more damage. I tried doing that. It was always one card short, so... And there's also Hurry Gate. I forgot about the ability the first time I played Weird Deer that you could use the ability once you evolve it. So I forgot to draw a card. And so I was. I probably could have saved myself and went the rounds if I just did the Hurry Gate when I did evolve it. But I just glanced over it. And yeah, cost me the match, I guess. Alrighty. Here's a Hisuian Basque Legion. I did see this card played a little bit during the pre release tournament and grudge dive if any of your pokemon were knocked out by damage and this turn this 90 damage more and active pokemon's now confused okay yeah this thing on one of those dark decks if they if anyone pulled it i think two people pulled it out of the 20 if i remember or just the people near me yeah you're gonna do some crazy things grudge dive one energy yep <laughs> this thing is gonna this thing will tear through things during a pre-release tournament all right fire energy togepi we've talked about silene here's a new one flip two coins put a number of cards up to the number of heads from your discard pile to the top of your deck in any order all right so i guess you could set up okay i'm going to pull this card next and this card next and then draw a card by turn use a silene you know which order, you know which one's coming first. You discard pile, you can look through it. You just have to win the coin flip, it looks like. Flip two coins, so you have to get a heads and another heads. So the chance of that 50-50, but then I think how you do that, so it becomes one, it becomes 50% times 50%, so I'm guessing it's a 25% chance of that happening. I could be wrong. I, it's been a long time since I've done probability and math, so. There's Silene. There's a Perugly. This is a new card. Didn't see it in the pre-release, though. That Slashing Claw does 100 for 3. That's kind of costly. Azelf. This has a 30 damage attack that does a Confusion. Actually, there's someone who is playing Yuxi, so... Yuxi might be useful, but this one isn't. I think Yuxi has an attack that 
allowed for like drawing of energy or something. Ralts talked about Chatot, Nikit, Magnemite. All right, those are all the new ones. These are the old ones that we've talked about on the last video, but I guess we could just go quickly through them and sort them. So Gardenia's Vigor. This is going to be a staple in any decks that use grass from now on. And again, if you draw any cards this way, draw two of them. You could attach up the two basic energies from your hand to one of your benched Pokemon. So again, setting up for those more powerful attacks that will cost more energy in a grass deck. Or you could also use them as colorless, I guess. So like Weirdeer, you could put two grass and whatnot. Just powering up your Pokemon is the main point of that, I guess. All right, Regirock. I'm going to just sort them by type. Weirdeer. Going over there, Holofoil, Samurott, Oricorio, that's a promo, Growlithe, Craniodos, that's a reverse, Oshawott, Water, Weirdeer, that's a pre-release promo, Braviary, reverse, Oricorio, that's a promo, Dewat, Glaceon, Glaceon is pretty nice, one of the fan favorite evolutions, of course, Toxel, that's a promo, Oricorio again, that's a promo. Combi, combi, combi. All these are grass. Oh, Hisuian Voltorb. I wanted to really pull the Hisuian Electrode, but sadly I haven't yet. Hopefully one day I'll pull it. There's Ponyta, Wishcash. All of these are water. That's a fighting. Togepi, Togekick. All of the Togetic, not Togekick. Um, Drifloon, Drifloon. These are all psychic. It looks like I've already sorted these earlier. There is a Hisuian Quillfish again. Good for decks. Put those there. Yeah, it looks like I've already sorted these earlier. Yeah, because these are these are colorless, so they would be right there. These are metal. I'm going to put them there. And again, these are all just foils, it looks like. And yeah, I already sorted these earlier. I did not know that. All right, and then these are supporters. That's energy. Let's go through and support our new, or not support, and sort through our new ones. That's all I meant to say. Sorry about that. Okay, so metal, colorless. Just going to do this really fast. Colorless supporter. Uh, psychic energy, basket regions water. This is reverse foil. Let me see where I put those. I don't know if the whole table's being shown on the screen, but that's fine. I'm just I'm just uh, sorting through them, not opening anything right now. I have one more sealed product, but I think I'm going to keep this one actually sealed. It's a Celebrations ETB. I'm going to hang on to it, I think. Dragon. This is our only dragon one. Okay, there we go. Choi, Chatot, Togepi, Nickit. A lot of Nickit, a lot of Ralts. A lot of Scyther and Combi. Super effective classes again. Very good for decks. I'm gonna be using it. Gold Duck Energy Reverse Overquill. Dark Sneasel. Ralts Magnemite goes over there. Took a piece. I got Great Jaw. And Mega Joy. It's a supporter. Dark Quillfish. Oop. Yeah. Ra Rufflet. I almost said Rowlet again. Dark Patch, another good card for Dex. Palanon's there. Choi again. Heavy Ball. Scyther. Bronzor. Grass. Driftblim. Fighting. Ralts. Honey. Ursaring. Chetot. Sir Colorless. Togepi. Nickit. Avalog. Magnemite. And Magnezone. Alright, everything's sorted. That being said, I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Pokemon card video I've set up here. And hope you have a wonderful day. Please be sure to do something nice for someone and get vaccinated. All right, guys, I'll catch you again in the next video. I plan to do another opening of Astral Radiance. Maybe it's going to be just a small one. I might just make it on YouTube. But yeah. Please stay tuned for more Pokemon content. All right, guys, have a good one. Good night to all of you, and I'll see you guys later in the next stream. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all, and have a good one.